What's going on everybody? This is Ultima I Device Vids, and today in this video we're going to be doing a speed and performance test between the 2020 iPhone SE and the iPhone 6S. And before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that you should take this video with somewhat of a grain of salt, as there's numerous varying factors that contribute to how a device will perform, so results can certainly vary. Also keep in mind that the 2020 iPhone SE was just released, so certain applications may not be fully optimized for it just yet, so once again results might vary over time. And also just to let you guys know, the iPhone SE 2020 is on the right, and the iPhone 6S is on the left, and that is the format that's going to be used throughout this entire video. I also wanted to quickly show you guys that both of these iPhones are running the latest iOS version as of recording this video, which is iOS 13.4.1. Alright, so first up we're going to test how these devices perform when opening up the following applications you're seeing right now consecutively, one after the next. So after we open up all these applications, we're going to go back and open some of them up and see what's still running. So as you can see here, we have a variety of apps, some of which are less CPU intensive, some of which are pretty CPU intensive. And we're also going to be doing a 4K 3 minute video export test with iMovie. So let's go ahead and make sure the app switchers are cleared, and we'll start off with Instagram. So as you can see here with the lighter applications, the SE2020 is definitely in the lead as you can see, but the 6S is certainly following right behind it. It's not until we get to some of the, you know, more CPU intensive heavier applications like Asphalt 9 here, that you're going to start to see a bigger gap between these two devices. I mean, of course, as to be expected, games like Asphalt 9 and San Andreas are super CPU intensive, so you'll definitely see a difference. So you can see there the SE2020 actually just finished up Asphalt 9 and is now moving on to San Andreas. You can see there the 6S is still loading Asphalt 9. And the SE2020 is wrapping up San Andreas, moving on to Minecraft. You can see there again the 6S is still loading Asphalt 9. Just a very hefty application there. So. Loading Minecraft on the SE. And there you go, you can see there the 6S caught up, finishing up Asphalt 9 and moving on to San Andreas. And meanwhile, the SE2020 is moving on to some of the lighter games like Subway Surfer, Zombie Highway 2, and Temple Run 2. And all right, so the SC2020 has reached the 4K three minute video export. Meanwhile, the 6S is moving on to Minecraft. And all right, so we're reaching the lighter games on the 6S, so Subway Surfers here, and of course Zombie Highway 2 and Temple Run after. So you can see here, definitely the 6S does a much, you know, better job with the lighter applications as to be expected, of course, in comparison to, you know, the heavier games. Of course, the device did come out in 2015, and the SE 2020 just came out here in 2020, so of course it makes sense. All right, so... The 6S just reached the 4K export test. It caught up to that. So we're going to go ahead and begin that. So, so now that they're both on the export test, I'm going to go ahead and speed through this until one of them finishes. And in this case, you can see there it's going to be the SE2020. All right, and the SE2020 just finished the export. Moving on to PUBG. Well, the 6S is, of course, still working on that 4K export. And we're going to go ahead and start a match in PUBG. And all right, moving on to Fortnite on the SE2020. All right, and the SE2020 is now on the optimizing phase for Fortnite, which takes a really long time. And since the SE2020 is optimizing Fortnite and the 6S is still exporting that 4K video, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up here until one of them finishes their task. All right, and the SE2020 has finished the optimization. We're going to go ahead and press play. And 
And meanwhile, the 6S just finished up the 4K Explorer. So now we're going to move on to PUBG on the 6S while the SE is loading Fortnite. All right, and on the 6S here, we're just going to start a match as soon as the application fully loads. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start that match. Meanwhile, again, the SE2020 is still loading up Fortnite. All right, so 6S finished up PUBG, moving on to Fortnite on the 6S. All right, so as you can see here, the SE2020 did finish up Fortnite. So now we could go ahead and check back in on some of the other applications that we opened earlier. And as you can see there, it actually needed to reload every application that we went back to except for Subway Surfers for whatever reason. But definitely a little bit surprising result, especially considering that the iPhone SE2020 has three gigabytes of RAM. And actually a little bit later, it's a very interesting result that you'll see is the 6S actually does a better job at keeping some of these applications open. And it only has two gigabytes of RAM. And meanwhile, you can see here the iPhone at 6S is still optimizing Fortnite, of course. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see there Subway Surfers remained open for some reason. I'm not entirely sure if maybe it's easier for the system to keep that application open or if there's just some degree of randomness to it. And once again, every other application on the SE2020 that we went back to was closed. So once again, the 6S, as you can see there, is still optimizing Fortnite. So we're just going to go ahead and speed through until that completes. And once again, as I said earlier, the optimizing phase takes a very long time for Fortnite. But after it's done, we're going to go ahead and press play on the 6S for Fortnite, as you can see right there. Now, I'm actually going to speed through the loading sequence as well right now, just because that takes a very, very long time as well. And all right, so the 6S just wrapped up Fortnite. So we're going to go ahead and check back in on some apps. So as you can see right there, Instagram, Twitter, and Spotify all remained open on the 6S, which is very surprising considering that it has two gigabytes of RAM in comparison to the SE2020 that has three gigabytes of RAM. And just considering the device's age in general, I'm really not sure why it was able to keep those applications open when the SE2020 was not. Just very interesting to see that. As I said at the beginning of the video, there's numerous varying factors that could you know, be the reason for that. But every other application that we checked up on on the 6S was not open. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed through this sequence. And all right, so let's go ahead and move on to some individual app launching tests. So launching applications at the same time on both. Both app switchers are cleared and we're going to start off with Instagram. So tapping on the application at the same time, you can see there both loaded up great. Of course, SE 2020 had that minor advantage as to be expected. And you know, with these minor smaller applications like this, you're really not going to see too big of a difference between these two. But once again, once you start to get to the heavier applications like Asphalt Line here, as I said in the earlier test, you start, you're going to start to notice a little bit of a bigger gap. And there you go, the SE2020 did load it up first. And there you go, the 6S just loaded it. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of this and we'll move on to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on both of these. So go ahead and launch that up at the exact same time here. And 
and we'll skip the intro sequence and start the actual game. So you see the SE is definitely in the lead here, as to be expected, but really not by too much, you can see, and both are performing the game pretty well. So let's go ahead and close out of here, and we'll move on to Minecraft. SE just loaded it up, and there goes the 6S as well. So let's close out of this. And now let's go ahead and do some stock applications real quick. So here's the clock app, just you know, very simple applications like that. It's just going to be a fraction of a second of a difference, so perfectly fine there. We'll do the photos application as well. You can see blazing fast on both, absolutely nothing to complain about at this point when you're you know, dealing with devices of this power. We're going to go ahead and launch up the camera app as well. Pretty much neck and neck in terms of the camera. However, the 6S did load it technically first if you wanted to declare a winner, and that may be because the SE camera has more features to load. Anyways, moving on to the weather application on both. Both loaded it perfectly fine. Again, that fraction of a second advantage on the SE 2020. All right, so now let's go ahead and run a Geekbench test. So this will get us some actual numbers to work with. So we're going to go into CPU on both of these and run a benchmark. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this run, and I'll come back to you guys with the numbers. And on the iPhone SE 2020, we have a single core score of 1,329 and a multi-core score of 3,398. On the 6S, we have a single core score of 562 and a multi-core score of 1,045. So definitely a considerable jump in terms of the numbers as to be expected with this many years in between these devices' release dates. All right, so now let's do an Antutu test. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open these up, run the benchmark, and I'll come back to you guys with the numbers. And all right, here are the Antutu results. So once again, definitely considerable jumps here in the numbers as to be expected. But yeah, guys, that wraps up for this video. I definitely find it interesting comparing older devices to newer devices just to see the difference in speed and performance. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.